From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening, thanks for joining us. No one was injured this afternoon in a two-vehicle accident at a busy intersection here in Fairbanks. According to Fairbanks Fire Department, two vehicles collided at the intersection of College Road and the Steves Highway. One of the vehicles shown in the video was slipped on its side, but luckily no injuries were reported. Now it was during a high traffic time and police and fire personnel were tasked with controlling and directing passing vehicles. An investigation into the cause is continuing. Another bail proposal has been denied for the Fairbanks tutor accused of raping two young boys. Claude Folks has been in jail since March of 2014, facing numerous felony sexual abuse of a minor charges. According to charging documents, Folks had sexual relations with a 15-year-old Hutchison student on school grounds. Now, since his initial arrest and charges, another alleged victim came forward claiming he was also sexually abused by Folks. Folks was later indicted in that case. Today, Folks was in Superior Court. His lawyer asked his bail be lowered to $1,000 and proposed two third-party custodians. That proposal was denied by Judge Michael McConaughey. He's looking at uh, an excess of 99 years in prison. I think uh, if the community knew that this defendant was released on $1,000 cash, it would, quite frankly would shock the community's conscience. Uh, this defendant is a sexual predator uh, who's facing numerous unclassified uh, offenses against multiple victims. Now, the parents of the first alleged victims sued the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District. The parties came to an agreement for just under $1 million. Folks is due to be stand trial in late September. Alston Air Force Base officials hosted a third public meeting in Moose Creek regarding chemicals found in the water wells there earlier this year. The EPA recently classified perfluorinated chemicals as an emer emerging contaminant. Now, it was used in many products, including firefighting foam, which the Air Force used on base and near Moose Creek. Ryan Grimes was at last night's meeting and filed this report. So I have a claw tub that me and my kids are soaking in the water, not just soaping up and rinsing off, we're soaking in this stuff. Over the course of several months, Air Force officials have been criticized by residents of Moose Creek regarding water contamination found in their wells. So far, the Air Force has provided free drinking water to citizens deemed to have high levels of PFCs in their wells. Colonel Mike Winkler says the Air Force plans on paying for filtration systems and water tanks to be installed in Moose Creek homes and businesses. So we have four main uh, ways that we can try to remediate the, uh, the contamination that's in the water right now. And uh, the first two of those are a granulated activated carbon system, which removes these chemicals from the water. The other two options are an above ground or a below ground tank that we would put in and then uh, we would work with contractors in the local community to go ahead and come refill those tanks on a recurring basis so that the residents would always have good clean drinking water. Many residents were happy about the solutions provided to them. Homes and businesses with PFC levels found above the standard safety limit will be able to opt in for a filtered system or water tank. The filter option seems to be the best option, we think. So, and they're doing, I believe, quarterly testing or monthly testing. Um, on a continuing basis with the water to make sure um, the filters get changed on, you know, on a timely matter and um, that the water stays clean or as clean as possible. So I think they're doing as much as they can right now with what they know. The contaminated water is said to be safe to bathe with but not safe to drink. Researchers say the unknown qualities of perfluorinated chemicals mean safety standards could change dramatically over the course of decades. Now we're actually getting to the point where we just stalled our first uh, granulated activated carbon filter in a residence here in Moose Creek today. So uh, we're, we're already just a couple months into this and already moving into the remediation phase. The next public meeting is scheduled near the end of September. This is Ryan Grimes reporting from Moose Creek. All right, when we come back each month, two street art gallery downtown features unique artists. This month, the focus has been on Sandhill Cranes. We'll show you some of the beautiful creations there. Also, we wrap up our backyard barbecue series in good style with tips on how to make a very special coleslaw. These stories and more when we come back. And welcome back. The Interior Community Health Center is being recognized as a leader in quality care by the Health Resources and Services Administration. The acknowledgement comes as a response to the center's electronic record system and ability to make a noticeable difference in overall populations with diabetes and high blood pressure. Health center quality leaders receive funding from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services when meeting these standards. The goal of ICHC is to provide comprehensive care to everyone in the community, including medical, dental, and in integrated behavior health services, regardless of their financial situation. 
Executive Director Cheryl Kilgore says keeping up with record systems makes a significant impact on the day-to-day -day treatment of patients. It really does improve your ability to monitor individual patient health and to accomplish what you want to do, population health, which is, and that was the other thing that we won an award on, is we've really been able to improve with people that come here that have diabetes. Uh, we've made huge improvements in people with diabetes having good glucose control. Even though downtown businesses have diminished, there has been one business that has flourished thanks to a number of artists. Here's this week's Interiortainment. Margaret Donay from the Two Street Art Gallery downtown says as the economy has gone down, so did many of the treasured art galleries in Fairbanks. Within one year, we lost three major galleries in our town, and we really wanted something where we could show our work and sell our work. And we were really lucky. Six of us got together. From there, we've, we're now up to 24 artists. Some of those artists are members, and some of them are consigners. So we give people a choice. This month, the art store featured a variety of artists that captured sandhill cranes. Well, we always like to support Kramer's Field and their um, crane festival. So in honor of that, this is, I believe, the second or third year that we've had uh, all the artists try to do at least one piece based on the Sandhill Cranes. Their upcoming show, which will be the first Friday in September, will be featuring three other new artists with different styles like fabric creations, Japanese woodcut birds, and decoy folk art birds. The artists will be here to meet and talk with you. Um, the three new artists will have a lot of new work. Their work has been in the gallery now all summer, but they'll be having new work, especially for this show. And the art show is open to view from 5 to 8 with wine and snacks. We always have a great turnout, and we hope to see everybody on First Friday as usual. We've been successful, and we're really proud of that. <laughs> like I said earlier, lots of times artists aren't given credit for being very good business people, so we're very proud that we've made it this long, and, and, it, and our sales keep increasing, and, and we're really happy with the way our community is supporting us. This is Katie Looper reporting. It's time once again to join Steve Moody with another edition of Backyard Barbecue. Tonight he's brought up a special guest to help him make a delicious slaw. Hi, Steve Moody here with Big Daddy's Barbecue with another segment of Backyard Barbecue. Today I brought in my little helper, Michaela. So we're going to make some coleslaw dressing for you to start off with. You're going to start off with two cups of mayonnaise, a cup of apple cider vinegar, half a cup of mustard, a cup of sugar, that's both of them. A half a cup of honey. A tablespoon of salt. A half, a a half a tablespoon of white pepper. And two tablespoons of celery seed. Now you're going to want to mix that pretty well. You want to mix that for me? Now in the meantime, you want to go ahead and shred some green cabbage, some carrots, and some purple cabbage. And then you're going to want to mix that in together pretty well. Okay. Then you're just going to add the dressing over the top. Now you don't want to do this too early because it will turn to, to mush. You can check out all the recipes at webcenter11.com. And we'll laugh and be happy at the backyard barbecue. And of course, thanks to Big Daddy's. And you know, mm -hmm. since their series is over, you can still check them out because not only do they have a great barbecue, mm -hmm. but they have a great karaoke. Oh, I heard about that every Thursday or something yeah. like that. Yeah, very it's fun. good. All right, Joe Cook is up next with a jam packed sports cast. The Nana cross country team appeared in their conference preseason polls. You'll see where they rank. Plus, Lathrop has a new basketball coach. Find out who got the job and more after the break.
Welcome back into your Alaska. Joe Cook here with your local Thursday sportscast. The GNAC released their preseason picks for the upcoming cross country running season. Both Alaska Nanooks women's and men's squads were picked to finish ninth in the 11 team conference. The Nooks finished seventh and eighth last year. New UAF head coach Nick Crawford will rely on Michael Fahrenbach, Mitch Burgess, Callie Stryker, and Dorothy O'Donnell to set the tone for his teams. The Anchorage Sea Wolves are regarded as top tier, though. The men's team was picked to repeat as conference champs. The women's team, they were picked to finish second, receiving one less first place vote than defending champion Simon Fraser. The Alaska Nanook season starts next Thursday, September 3rd, with the Moda Health Alaska Invitational on the West Ridge Trails. UAF hosts Seattle, Seattle Pacific and MSUB. The Alaska Nanook hockey team invited the public and their devoted hockey fans to the Carlson Center on Wednesday night. The Nooks had their second annual Select a Seat event. Those who attended were able to pick their seat for their season tickets, sample some new concessions, which included special chicken wings, wraps, and of course, beer. Beer will be free to drink in a few sections of the Carlson Center this season in hopes of creating a raucous game atmosphere. There was a locker room tour and fans were able to mingle and get autographs from players who are back on campus. This is a fan, friend, uh, this is a fan, a fan friendly event, which kicks off what could be a banner year for the Alaska hockey program and the fans. I think it might get a little more rowdy, which will be nice for uh, for both opponent, both teams. Uh, this our squad and and the other squad bring a little more atmosphere into the rink, and um, hopefully hopefully some more fans come. We'll see what happens though. Uh, we have a lot of guys that are just hardworking guys right down to the grindstone, and uh, we're going to be a team that has four lines that are going to work together and dominate a game. It's good to see the fans, especially the ones that you might have a bit of a connection with previously, and you know just getting back to town, you kind of get to see them again and. Uh, say hi and they're always excited to see the team and so uh, the energy is good here and it just makes me more excited to get back here and play some hockey. Janae Delote Sukup is putting herself and Allison on the map again in China. The former Allison Raven qualified for the women's long jump finals in the World Track and Field Championships in Beijing. She advanced to Friday's finals with a jump of 21 feet 11 inches. She can jump off of either leg after breaking her left ankle a couple years ago. She switched to her right leg. No woman has jumped 22 feet on both legs before, and she is the closest. Delote Sukup won the bronze medal in the long jump in the 2012 Olympic Games. In high school sports news, the Lathrop Malamutes found their successor to Milo Griffin. They stayed in house. Matt Wilkin has been named the new head coach of the Lathrop boys basketball team. Wilkin is, is a Lathrop product. He played for Griffin in the late 80s. He went on to play college ball at California Lutheran University and was coached by former Charlotte Bobcats head coach Mike Dunlap graduated from Lathrop in 1976. The Malamutes finished second in the Mid-Alaska Conference and earned a state tournament berth last season. Wilkin was an assistant for Lathrop the past five seasons. This will be his first head coaching job. We end tonight with a look at the week three matchups for high school football. Friday night features what could be one of the best games of the season. North Pole hosts West Valley at 7 p.m. The Patriots are 2-0 and they are hot on both sides of the ball. They've outscored their first two opponents 93-8. How about that? West Valley is coming off their first win of the year over Thunder Mountain and they will aim to avenge last year's season opener where North Pole executed a goal line stand in the waning seconds to get the win at West Valley. And Saturday night at 7 o'clock, Lathrop, they will take on Wasilla at home for their first Rail Belt Conference game of the season. The Malamutes lost in Palmer last week and will try to join West Valley as the second Rail Belt team to win a game this season. But before that game on Saturday, the Allison Ravens are going up against the Valdez Buccaneers at 1 o'clock at home. Allison is fourth in the small medium schools rankings. The Ravens have a balanced attack on offense and defense. They've outscored their first two opponents 104 to 18. And that's it for sports tonight, folks. Thanks for watching your full weather forecast with Mike Schultz is up next after the break and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into our Thursday night edition of uh, the newscast and we're talking weather now and boy, why, what a, what a day it was. It was windy and crazy today. Wind blowing, the rain's coming through, but then you know what? I just looked out the window and things are getting better. 
The skies are starting to clear. We actually saw some blue sky. How about that? And as far as what's going on in our photograph, this is a magnificent photograph sent in by Daniel Sladen. He was down near Kodiak Island and captured this beautiful shot of a humpback breaching, making a big splash by all means. Again, thanks to Daniel for that photograph. Fantastic. If you have a photograph to share, send it to photos at ktvf11.com and we will share it with the rest of the audience. Today's high, 48 degrees only. And last night's low, 45. The record high, 84. That was in 1981. The record low, chilly, 29 degrees in 1933. Sunrise and sunset, 15 hours and 12 minutes. A loss of 7 minutes from yesterday. On the satellite and radar, you can see everything starting to clear out pretty good. That frontal system bl blowing off into uh, Canada. The secondary frontal system moving through the Fairbanks area. And out to the west, things are looking really good. Not a whole lot to talk about. And a little bit of shower activity around the, uh, the uh, Prince William Sound area. On our map tonight, here's what it looks like. You can see over southeast Alaska, it's raining once again at Juneau and Ketchikan. Temperature's pretty cool there, too. Only 52 degrees at Juneau. Sunshine in Anchorage, 60 degrees, the same for Kodiak at 65. Over along the Aleutian Chain, Coal Bay, a little fog there today, 53 degrees. And partly cloudy to cloudy skies up and down the west coast where it was kind of chilly in Nome, 47 degrees. But not as cold as it was north of the Brooks Range, 38 degrees at Barrow. Port Yukon, only 41 degrees, so a lot of cold air moving across the state. Just the opposite in the lower 48. As you can see here, we're looking at temperatures close to 90 degrees at Denver. Once again, over the 100 degree mark for Las Vegas and Phoenix. Hot day in Seattle, 85 degrees, but there is some rain shower activity. Maybe it's helping put out some of those fires, at least suspending them a little bit. Minneapolis showers there also. Another hot day in Dallas, 97 degrees. Over the eastern side of the country, temperatures in the 80s with thunderstorms over the Florida Peninsula. And over the northeast, once again, the low 80s there for New York and Washington, D.C. On the satellite radar, a pretty good band of showers moving across the eastern side of the country. And then a little bit of a pocket of moisture helping to spawn some afternoon showers and thunderstorms across the central plains. And look at this, a little more activity moving on the west coast. And that is indicated on our next graphic here, as you can see. Pacific moisture is expected to stream into the northwest, which is a good sign, helping to uh, end the drought to a certain degree, and the heat will be pushed back to the east. In fact, the overall outlook is calling for much better conditions. Now, we had a lot of folks are looking at uh, this uh, tropical storm right now that went through uh, the Dominican Republic and is now on a course to move up to the Florida Peninsula and up to the east coast by next week. So you keep an eye on that. That's Tropical Storm Erica. All right, back to Alaska for tomorrow for the northern sections. Here's what it looks like. Rain showers expected in Barrow, mostly cloudy skies for Nome and also at Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, well, we're looking at uh, scattered showers mixed with snow at the higher elevations above 1,500 to 2,000 feet, turning to rain by afternoon. And it'll be once again scattered across the interior. Over southeast Alaska, it looks like rain diminishing at Juneau, but becoming heavy in the Ketchikan area. And over the uh, southwest part of the state, rain periods for Bethel and cloudy skies at Cold Bay, mostly sunny skies for Kodiak. And down around the Anchorage Bull, looking pretty good. Mostly sunny skies in Anchorage, partly cloudy skies for Homer, and sunny skies in Valdez. Okay, time once again for our kids' weather and we'll, another weather fact. This one is uh, pretty interesting. In 1970, Elko, Nevada was deluged with four inches of rain in less than an hour, and that's still a state record. And again, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank celebrating their 50 years of service to the interior. And of course, next week we'll be visiting with the kids at Anderson Elementary School at Eielson Air Force Base. And one other note to pass along, it is our last night for our fishing report, brought to you by the good folks at Life Med Alaska. Thank you for sponsoring that. And down the Valdez area, silvers are thick, but halibut are getting stronger each day. In the Kenai River area, silvers are now in the Kenai and the Russian River areas. And the Matanuska Valley, Willow, Montana Creek, and Sunshine Creek are good for cohos, in other words, silvers. So some pretty good fishing all the way across Alaska. Here's our forecast for the remainder of the night. Overnight low, below 40 degrees, 38 degrees. Gusty winds should be slowly diminishing. Also the showers, as I said before. And for tomorrow, looks like 48 degrees. Another day with possibly showers, but less winds. The five-day outlook, again, temperatures cooling down pretty good for Saturday and Sunday. But then a slow warm-up again by Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Overnight lows, like I said, up to about 40 degrees. Daytime highs will also rally by next Wednesday up to 60 degrees. And that's a rally, considering how cold it was today. 
That is right. I'll yeah. take it. Only 48 degrees today for the high. Yeah. That's uh, just amazing. <laughs> no. So football so. weather for this weekend, it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Rain. Just warm there. That's yeah, for sure. Wind. Okay, thank you, Mike. That will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Well, tonight on NBC Nightly News, Vice President Joe Biden breaks his silence on whether he will become a presidential candidate for 2016. That's up next with Lester Holt. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. All right, from all of us here at the News Center, have a good night. Good night.